Though the term Marines has its roots in describing the infantry who in centuries past fought from ships at sea, in the modern era, it has become synonymous with a different kind of institution. It describes a special force, one always ready to fight regardless of their nation's readiness for war, capable of operating far from friendly soil. It is a change in definition necessitated by the development of interstellar civilization, but one embodied by the United States Colonial Marine Corps. The Colonial Marine Corps is one of the service branches of the United States Armed Forces. Its role, distinct from that of the United States Army, is to project power on sea, in the air, and in space, and to fully exploit the advantages of interstellar deployment capability. It is a force in readiness and the nation's only major means to enter hostile areas from space. While it deploys closely with the fleets of the United States Aerospace Forces, the Corps is a wholly independent service, utilizing a combined arms approach to ensure its versatility and responsiveness. The National Security Act of 2101 defines the structure of the Colonial Marine Corps as four combat divisions and four aerospace wings, accompanied by the auxiliary forces inherent to these kinds of formations. In 2179, this stands at roughly 165,000 Marines, down from a peak of 240,000 in 2165 during the Tientsin Campaign. A further 50,000 constitute the Corps' reserve component, made up of one additional division, an aerospace wing. The Corps is generally split into two interdependent components, the operating forces and the supporting establishment. The operating forces fall under the authority of United States Space Command and are organized into Marine Space Forces, three of which currently exist. Marine Space Force Sol is responsible for operations throughout the Corps systems, Marine Space Force Eridani operates along the American and Chinese colonial arms, while Marine Space Force Hercules is responsible for operating on the fringes of settled territory and throughout the Anglo-Chinese arm. These are largely administrative divisions, however, with the practicalities of interstellar travel, meaning these three forces frequently intermingle and overlap. Each is kept in an advanced state of readiness, able to respond to any commitments in their theater of operations. Marine Space Force Sol, the largest with two divisions, is capable of reinforcing the other two, with certain brigades and aerospace wings specifically forward deployed. The basic ground element of each Marine Space Force is the Colonial Marine Division, a balanced formation consisting of combat, support, and service components. Each division is based around three infantry regiments, with each regiment further divided into reinforced battalion combat teams known as Marine Assault Units. These MAUs are the building blocks of operating forces and the smallest formation capable of independent operations. The key to these assault units is their mobility and flexibility. Each MAU incorporates its own style of capability, able to rapidly deploy the entire unit and with enough supplies for 30 days of unsupported ground combat operations. These are further accompanied by aerospace units providing space control, reconnaissance, and orbital bombardment capabilities. An MAU includes reconnaissance platoons, scout sniper squads, combat engineering platoons, and heavy ordnance companies. When sufficient starlift capability is available, they will also possess self-propelled artillery, multiple launch rocket systems, anti-ballistic missile systems, and ground-launched space weapons. In certain situations, they might also include one of the Marine Corps' six tank battalions. Regardless of the heavy support available, however, the fighting line will always be made up of infantry platoons. Reforms made during the Marine 70 program stress the need for small autonomous infantry units capable of operating with or without higher level support. Therefore, each platoon within an MAU has its own organic transport and heavy weaponry, allowing even individual squads to move rapidly and apply great concentrations of firepower without any supportive elements. Colonial Marine aerospace wings constitute the other major component of the operating forces. It is primarily an administrative formation, as its fighting strength is directly attached to Colonial Marine divisions. Their dropships, strike ships, and shuttles perform a dual role, fighting as an integrated part of the Marine assault units and providing forward support. These tasks might include air superiority missions, reconnaissance, close air support, forward supply, casualty evacuation, and search and rescue. Each wing is divided into three groups. Drop groups assigned to transport Marine ground teams, tactical groups tasked with various air support missions, and support groups that provide logistical support. 
Roughly 58% of Marines serve in the operating forces, with the remainder in the supporting establishment. This non-fighting component is essential if the Corps is to operate effectively. It is responsible for training, research and development, administration and logistical support, and recruiting. All eligible recruits are required to be a high school graduate, or the equivalent, and have a clean police record. Training has changed relatively little over the centuries, with major boot camps located at Paris Island, San Diego, and Guantanamo Bay. Officer Candidate School is located at Camp Barrett, Quantico, although there is a tradition of accepting officers from the Naval Academy at Annapolis and the Aerospace Flight Academy at Gateway Station. The ratio of men to women in the Corps is approximately 1 to 2.6. Some 24% of aspiring recruits will fail to make the grade. While the Geneva Conventions prohibit the arming of synthetic humans with weaponry, androids have been increasingly deployed with colonial marine units. The Corps regards them as indispensable resources, supporting frontline units as multi-role, auxiliary, team members, and mobile databases. At the platoon level and above, they are commonly used as drivers, pilots, medics, and scientific advisors. All synthetic personnel within the core are classified as property and can be ordered to undertake hazardous tasks in the place of human marines. Their comparatively superior performance, however, means they are rarely regarded as expendable. The naval component of the Colonial Marine Corps is provided by USCM Starlift Command, an allied branch of the United States Aerospace Forces Transport Command. It is a largely administrative organization, responsible only for arranging the use of aerospace force transports to fulfill the operational requirements of marine units. The three major classes of ship used by Starlift Command include the Conestoga-class light assault ship, Henderson Field-class transport, and the Okinawa-class assault carrier. During operations requiring additional aerospace force assets for use in space control or escort duties, a task force will fall under the command of a USASF fleet commander, but will otherwise fall under the authority of a Marine officer. Since its creation, the United States Colonial Marine Corps has operated in conjunction with the Canadian Colonial Armed Forces, the Latin American Colonial Navy, and the other branches of the United States Armed Forces. Together, they operate under the joint command structure of the United America's Allied Command. The Colonial Marine Corps represents the UA's major striking element, tasked with maintaining the collective security of all its signatories. United America's interventions on colonies like Torin Prime, Helena 215, and Lebanon II have proven the ability of the Colonial Marine Corps to successfully achieve its stated mandate. The ongoing Cold War with the Union of Progressive Peoples, meanwhile, has ensured that the needs of the force are given the appropriate funding. Its legacy of success has marked the Colonial Marine Corps as the premier military institution within settled space. While many black marks exist across its history, they have been scrubbed from any official record and are likely to remain unknown. Yet Scuttlebutt continues to circulate among Marines of a massacre on Hadley's Hope, a colony somewhere on the frontier. A nuclear detonation was supposedly used to cover up the incident. And while this is almost certainly the creation of the infamous marine rumor mill, it is undeniable that there are many mysteries waiting in the blackness of space. Places where no matter how many marines are sent in, no one will hear them scream. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. Join other Templin Institute personnel on our Discord server, where discussions are held daily on the elements of world building, spaceship design, the best method of cooking rice, and other critical issues affecting alternate worlds. You'll find a link in the description.